Hello, everybody. Atma Namaste. Welcome to the session. Atma Namaste, Sumi. Atma Namaste. Hope you had a wonderful meditation this morning. Yes, yes. yes. Have you yes. all been sleeping well? Awesome. Yes. You are sleeping yeah. well? No problems? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm not able to sleep. You're not able to sleep. See? <laughs> it becomes um, very heavy after the meditation. Correct. Uh, so that's the reason why we really need to do a lot of exercises. Because if we stop doing exercises, um, the congestion, you know, because every day you got such a uh, shower of blessings that if you don't release it by doing something, uh, first of all, blessing, exercises, some, something else that can expend this energy, you will get congested, yeah? Remember, we've just finished three days. Tomorrow is the day and then we have three more days. So I'm just going back to the page I need to get to. So was yesterday's Sorry, session? Tomorrow, no session? Tomorrow, no session, yes. Because by the time we finish, might be a little too crazy and you've got so much energy. I think uh, maybe one hour you should just go running around <laughs> your, your building or on your terrace. <laughs> Uh, there's going to be so much energy. I don't think you'll be able to handle another study session. So tomorrow and on Sunday, we'll take a break. Sunday, because I'd like all of you to please join Master Danny's session. He's doing, uh, even I'm interested in, in, in listening to what he has to say. He's always such a great orator and, and a teacher. I'd love to hear from him. Yeah. So let's do this. Uh, we'll start with an invocation. Uh, close your eyes. Connect tongue to your palate. Feel yourself in the presence of our beloved teacher. I'm going to mute everybody for now. Let's also feel ourselves in the presence of all these great masters and teachers of theosophy. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chirokok Sui. To Lord Maha Guruji Meling, to Buddha Kwanyan. Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to the Lord Christ, to Yehoshua Bar Miriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, all the angels and beings of knowledge, light, and power, to all the great teachers and the masters of theosophy, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your knowledge, for your understanding, deeper understanding of your priceless teachings. We ask you to help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge, to simplify it, to help us make it part of our lives, to practice it, if any, so we may become better instruments in your service. We thank you with much love, with gratitude, respect and love, we thank you. Atma Namaste to everybody. Welcome uh, to the session. So what I thought I would do really quickly is uh, just go through yesterday uh, and then come back uh, to today. Yeah, just very quickly, just with the PowerPoints. So in case anybody um, hasn't seen it, one second, I think I, hold on. I didn't put it on full. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Perfect. Now, let me go back. All right. Can you see it? Is it clear? Yes. Can you give me a thumbs up? Those of you. Oh, perfect. All right. So this is basically what we were talking about uh, yesterday. Yes. And uh, so we spoke about the mental body that it basically comes from the lower four layers of the mental world. Yes. It's the body through which we can express our concrete and abstract thoughts. There are different colors in this delicate body. However, it is not as subtle as our causal body. Yes. The upper layers. So the upper layers, the shades or the colors are much more delicate and beautiful. However, the mental body also has its own colors, but it's not as delicate as a causal body. And there can be mixture of colors because of mixture of thoughts. Yeah. So that's what we spoke about uh, to start with earlier. 
And then we spoke about the size and the shape of the mental body. We said that most of it is determined by the causal body. And then it has these irregular segments. And these segments are connected to parts of our brain. And therefore, those thoughts will only come and function in that part of your brain. However, uh, if this mental body of ours is not well developed, then information or thought, yes, ideas from your mental body cannot come into the brain very easily. And if it goes through some inappropriate channels, as they say, then by the time it reaches your brain, it, it's, it's like a distorted, clumsy kind of thought and it doesn't make any sense to you. And that's why we said some people tend to understand mathematics very well compared to others. Another is able to understand music and recognize the tones and uh, recognize the sounds better than another. Yeah. And so normally in the mental body, just like we sp speak about the energy body in pranic healing, there has to be circulation of prana. Similarly, the matter in the mental body should also more or less travel freely. However, when you start to kind of uh, focus on one particular thought, that thought becomes hard and it, it stays in that part of your mental body, not allowing then circulation to happen. Yes. And this can then become, uh, it kind of impedes or, or stops circulation and it could be something like prejudice. And therefore that part becomes uh, a part where the person cannot think clearly in that section of their mental body. Yes. So remember the mental body has those segments. So if that segment has hardened, then if you talk to them about that segment, like a belief, a religious belief, or uh, something to do with science, then they're very stuck with that idea. They will never budge. Whereas other parts of their mental body, any other thought that you talk about, they're very flexible. Yes. And so this does not help them be open and flexible. And they obviously also in some cases cannot think clearly. This can also be about a thought of a person. Yeah. And as this thought continues uh, to say, for example, hopefully it's a positive thought, it starts to take shape in your mental body. Then as it says here, it starts to vibrate really fast and starts to swell up and increase that part of your mental body. Now, if that is a persistent and a prolonged thought, then that part of your aura will permanently start to look bigger than the rest. Yeah. And depending on the kind of thoughts you create, the first one, the thought goes down to the lower part because it is energies or thoughts, if I can put, that, put it that way. The energy form of the thought is of, an, of a lower nature uh, and also not a very good one. So you could call it a negative thought. Tends, tends to gravitate down to the lower part of your aura, the mental body's aura. Yeah? Whereas when you have positive thoughts, uh, thoughts of devotion, of research, uh, then these thoughts, which are more positive, move towards the upper or gravitate towards the upper part of your aura. And then we spoke about uh, the mental body. And so we spoke about thoughts that when you think there is a tiny little thought, and uh, we, we understand this very well because of uh, pranic psychotherapy. And so it floats. Now, if the thought is connected with an emotion, they call it an astro mental thought form. And when that happens, then it no longer just stays inside you. These thoughts, uh, which is just a thought, just floats in your aura. Yes, but if there's an emotion connected with it, according to the book, it kind of jumps out of your aura and goes towards the person or the object it's intended. And then what it does is it discharges or it releases itself when the time comes into the mental body and the astral body of that person, affecting them positively or negatively. And so we looked at uh, the thought of uh, love. So... Uh, the thought forms that we discharge, uh, that we create, uh, usually we are the ones who create it, whether it's to ourselves or another, has a particular uh, color and shape. And if the thought is got a lot of energy, it can be very, very powerful. Yes. So say, for example, a program that you create within your body is basically a very, very strong thought form. When you do Kriya Shakti, it's a very, very strong thought form for materialization. Yeah. So there can be different types of thoughts. Now we also understand this. There is a psychic radiatory field around the thoughts that we create. Yes. And so people can be influenced either by your thought or by the psychic radiatory field that the thought within you starts to radiate. So today we're going to move to the astral body. Yes. And so when you look at the astral body, the astral body, similar to the mental body is also 
one sec let me just take this down um, it also has colors yes and these colors are very similar to what you and i were talking about when we spoke about the causal body we spoke of the mental body with colors so even the astral body has its colors however the colors of the astral body are about eight eight octaves lower compared to the mental body yes so if we were talking about a lovely uh, blue yes a, a thought form of blue the blue in the mental body will look much more beautiful or more lively compared to the blue of devotion in the astral body yes so as these colors come lower and lower into matter their liveliness or their their uh, their quality of color starts to become less and less and so it becomes uh, one octave lower and lower and lower as it comes down so to go back when we're talking about again the astral body the astral body has colors and this is of a lower octave for those of you who understand music and also this is the vehicle through which we create emotions through which we have our passion in life now the shape and the appearance is something of importance as well right and so the so if you look at the astral body the colors are what we've always spoken about so when we look at um, an ordinary person yes uh, normally the astral body has a definite shape it looks like the egg shape or the ovoid shape that we were talking about a definite outline however if it was a primitive man yes they say that the same uh, shape that we are talking about it looks uh, first of all irregular it's not a perfect ovoid and also the colors are not very pleasant so even though they might have a blue or green or red like the colors here it might be very very unpleasant to look at very cloudy yes uh, and so not very um, pleasant for us to see now moving on now when you look at the astral body or uh, the astral vehicle when it is quiet the colors that are seen yes indicate the indicate the emotion that the person is now feeling all right and so what happens is say for example right now you're feeling a lot of love yeah love to the teacher love to god and so the color of the emotion is pink and so most of it predominantly as I, as you can see the fourth point there that is the color that you will see in the astral body of that person as long as that feeling of love continues to stay as this feeling starts to die out then all the other emotions of you know um say say for example very strong drive a uh, very assertive person at the same time an angry person all these emotions which are normally there will all come to the surface back to its normal state same thing then afterwards say for example they become very devotional because of a meditation or something then the whole hue the color of the entire astral body will then turn to a bluish tinge yes however if this emotion yes now say for example we are looking at pink or the blue right now as this emotion continues to stay in that person every day for a couple of hours the love the love the love the love then that color that pink color which we are associating with love then what happens to that love is that in the astral body if there is already pink existing this pink because of the prolonged emotion that is being created on a regular basis which is in this case positive it then becomes a permanent blue sorry a permanent pink in that part of the body now if it's devotion and it's blue then even though there is already a blue in the aura before now what happens is that blue becomes stronger and it becomes a permanent color in the astral body of that person yes it becomes a permanent color that's the interesting thing about uh, about this uh, this body and uh, sorry and then the last point is these permanent permanent colors that then start to show up on our astral body will then have its own influence on the earlier body which is our mental body so almost at the same level so say for example this is on on the uh, fourth level of your astral body on the fourth level of the mental body on a corresponding level 
this permanent color will start to affect or uh, react on the mental body. Now, not only on the mental body, then from the mental body, this positive emotion will then also react on your causal body, the, the home of your higher soul. So interestingly, all your higher emotions of love and compassion, devotion, if it starts to become a permanent color in your astral body, will start to influence the mental body and the causal body. Now, interestingly, the causal body can only take higher vibrations, which means it can only take positive vibrations. So if you have irritation, if you have jealousy in you, where the vibration of these energies are much lower, the colors are also much lower, then it, it might influence, yes, the mental body, but it cannot go into the causal body. Because the causal body doesn't have these vibrations. So even if it comes near, it cannot enter or affect or influence the causal body. So the causal body, they say, I hope I can find that line, can only take positive emotion. Can I find that? All right, I can't find that right now. So all your emotions that you and I create does have an effect. And so uh, the longer that we tend to have positive emotions, the better it is, yeah? Okay, so here is what I found. Um, the mental body in turn reacts upon the causal in the same way and thus all good qualities expressed in the lower vehicles, that's our mental and astral and maybe even the physical world, uh, in the lower vehicles by degrees establish themselves permanently in the ego or in the higher soul. So that's why those become your permanent qualities even when you reincarnate in a different lifetime. Okay, so these are the positive ones. So let's move on. Evil qualities cannot do so as the rate of vibration which express them are impossible for the higher mental matter of which the causal body is constructed. So it really cannot go there. Yeah. So irrespective of these worlds. So this is basically your astral body that we were talking about. And now we'll move to your next body or coming down to the physical world. Now, in this physical world, the body that we have, in, in our ordinary life, we are only associated in this physical world with the solid, the liquid, and the gaseous state of most of matter. However, even our physical body is actually a composition of these seven subdivisions of the physical plane. And all of them are part of us and are important to us. However, our ability to be conscious of their presence has not yet been common to the average man. Now, all of you here, pranic healers, understand what we're talking about because beyond the third, we are aware of this next one. Yes, so we are all aware of this one, which we call the invisible physical part of the body, which is referred to as the etheric double. Now, in most of theosophy, when they start talking about the physical body, they actually refer to both the physical body and the invisible, bo invisible physical body, all right? Now, the uh, etheric double, which is also what we call the energy body, is this invisible physical body. Now, um, the, this particular body, one second. Now, this particular body is, as we know already in pranic healing, takes the exact size and shape of our physical form, slightly bigger than that, right? So if you are uh, really thin, then your, your etheric body will also look thin. If you are very tall, it will also look tall, yes? So it takes more or less the shape, and that is something that you already know. So I'm going to go through this really fast. The etheric vibration, uh, if you look at the etheric matter, it comes from a finer finer particle of the physical world and finer matter. And therefore, um, the, the name given to it at this point is etheric. What is important for us to remember is that in this etheric body that we have, prana or vital energy is very important for its survival. Yes, not only its survival, if there's not enough prana in the etheric double, then our physical body will also get affected. So for this physical body to survive, yes, our energy body needs to have sufficient energy coming through to keep this body or both bodies alive. Now, the other thing about this physical, uh, another thing about the etheric double, the invisible physical body, is that it is the bridge through which from the 
mental and the astral body, the thoughts and emotions that we create, it is the bridge through which it comes into our brain. And so if this bridge doesn't exist, then it's difficult for thoughts and emotions to ulti ultimately come to the densest form of matter that is uh, from the mind down all the way into the, into the uh, densest matter, which is our physical brain. Yes. And so this can also be something that we need to remember about our etheric body. Now coming to your physical body, our physical body, one of the things that we have to remember about our physical body is that it is perpetually changing. Yes. Uh, so whether you were a child, whether you're a young adult, whether you're an older person, it is constantly changing with the cells, with the organs, the functioning of the organs. However, for this physical body to survive, it needs three things on a regular basis. Yes. Food for digestion, air for breathing and prana for its absorption. So whether you're having prana in the form of water where you need to drink because it has uh, prana already absorbed, whether it's the food that you eat, yes, you will then absorb this vitality energy on a regular basis. Now, this vitality energy is very important for you and I, because like we said, to keep the body alive, to keep our organs alive, it is very, very important. So if you look at it in the physical body, yes, we have the visible and the invisible. So on the, the upper part, we're talking about the visible physical body. So we have what is called blood that moves through our veins. Now, if there's any abnormality in the blood, like an infection, you realize the body is infected. Yes. And the body is affected because of that. So if this, this circulation of blood is affected, it does affect our physical body. Interestingly, in the invisible physical body, when the vitality flow, that is the prana that we talk about, through our nadis is also irregular. Yes, even the slightest irregular, irregular, irregularity sorry, affects the etheric and the physical body. And this everyone knows, correct? And so this is something for us to remember because these two are interconnected. So when you start to take care of your physical body, you're going to also allow the etheric body or the energy body to function better because then the, the flow of prana can move smoothly and easily because the body by itself is also healthy or rather the energy centers that control these organs have least amount of blockages uh, in and around it. Yeah. And so when you look at this vitality force, um, just to help you understand this, all right, uh, just give me a second. All right, uh, because I want to show you again, I brought this back. <laughs> so basically, if you look at prana, Prana, they say most of it comes from the sun. It originates from the sun, the vitality, yes? And so if there is what you call an ultimate physical atom, so you have one physical atom, as soon as this physical atom is able to then absorb, yes, uh, or draws to itself, is able to charge itself with this prana. So there is this atom, the sun prana or the sun, uh, not sun prana really, prana that comes from there, which originates from there. When it comes towards this atom, it gets charged. Now, when this atom gets charged, what it does, it, it collects around itself six other atoms. Yeah, I'm trying to put them in colors so it looks different. That's four, five, and let's put another one. Six. Yes. So what does it do? It actually then attracts towards itself six other atoms, making it seven. And when this, which is called now an etheric element, is absorbed by your body, usually, as we know, air prana is absorbed by your spleen. So when this etheric element element is now absorbed by your spleen chakra, then you see this, this vitality that it's absorbed, which it had absorbed. Now it will distribute the prana into all the other six. So all seven are now charged with vitality or with prana. And so when it goes into the spleen, remember this, the function of the spleen is to absorb prana. Yes, break it. 
and distribute it. So what happens is as soon as this goes into the spleen, it will break. It will break out. Yes, so it breaks out. And then based on where it's required, so the red probably goes to the lower chakras, the blue will go to the throat, orange might go again to the basic, wherever it needs to go. You understand? And then the prana gets redistributed to the entire etheric body. Yes? I hope that made sense to you. Is that clear? No. <laughs> All right. So uh, just to repeat myself, so the vitality or the prana that we talk about originates from the sun. When, this, when it comes towards a physical atom, it gets charged by this prana. Once it gets charged, it will automatically try and collect six atoms around it. Yes, and this becomes an etheric element. And this is then absorbed by your chakras. Say, for example, the spleen. When it gets into the spleen, the spleen always absorbs Yes, digest, yes, and that it breaks it down and then redistributes the prana according to what is required by the rest of the body. Yes. So, so that is something that you already know, but I just wanted to show you with reference um, to the atoms that they're talking about here. Now, we all also know that there are chakras and these energy centers are the ones that require this prana to sustain itself, of course, and also the organs under it. Now, in this book, they've only spoken about seven, but you and I know that there are 11, so I'm going to just skip that part as well. So coming back, all the bodies that we're talking about, whether it's the causal, the mental, the astric, astral, or the etheric body, clairvoyantly, they're all seen to be an ovoid. Yes, and um, so if you look at it, when you look at the physical body, you notice that when you scan the energy body, the densest matter or the densest particle of the energy body is closest, yes, to the physical body. That means this part, the center, which is the, where the physical body is, towards this center, the heavier matter is then attracted. The lighter ones go outwards. Yes, so the lighter matter of even the energy body is outwards. Similarly, when you look at the astral body, the astral matter is also then concentrated around the physical and invisible physical body. This is where the densest astral matter is. And again, towards the side, towards the outward layers, it becomes more subtle. And the same thing happens even in the mental. And again, in the mental body, the densest part again is in the center, the center of, if you want to call it the astral body, compared to the layers of the mental body that continue to go outwards. Now, this is one of the reasons why when you go to sleep and if you go into the astral body, uh, into your astral body, and then you move into the astral plane or the mental plane, when you see others, acquaintances, uh, people that you know, your family members, your friends in the astral world, you recognize them because they take on the shape of the physical form. Right now, the form is more misty like, but uh, when you see them, since they look exactly like they are in the physical world, you recognize them whether you are there now in the astral world or in the mental world. Yes, so to continue, so that's how you and I use these bodies on a regular basis, and this is the understanding of our respective bodies. And so, to move ahead. And so the constitution of man is basically that you and I, yes, are the monad, which is called the divine spark. We, I've taken all the words only from the book uh, for better reference. So monad is basically the divine spark, yes. And from that monad, a part of it only comes down as the higher soul, which is called the ego. So it, it's written here that only a partial expression of the monad comes down and represented as the ego or the higher soul, right? And then this is important because the monad wants to evolve. There is evolution that it wants to go through and this is only done by gaining experience in the life that they will lead with the physical body, the astral body and the mental body as an incarnated soul. And so to gain these experiences, to gain new qualities, it has to come down to evolve. However, again, from this level, the ego cannot go down fully. And so 
they say here only a small part of the imperfect ego comes down as a personality, the personality referred to as the incarnated soul or, or the jivatna. So the monad in the Indian context is what you call the paramatma. Yes, in Masachar's teachings, it's called the divine spark. The ego is equal to what we call in Sanskrit as the atma. And in Masachar's school, the higher soul. And very simply put, the last one, personality is the jivatma or the incarnated, school, in, incarnated uh, soul in our school. Yes. And so this is basically it. So to just make you understand from a higher level, not all of it can come. So only a small portion comes as an ego. Now from that small portion, only a tiny portion comes out as a jivatma. So we already say that the divine spark is a fragment of God. So we are a fragment of a fragment of a fragment. Now I sound like Sri Ram. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. So that's basically your constitution. <clears throat> And ultimately, what we want to do is once you've come here as the incarnated soul, you want to first unite with your higher soul. And that is called soul realization. And so the journey of the monad, as it comes down to the physical world, goes back up. And so the first union is with the ego, which is called high, the soul realization. That is becoming one with your higher soul. And the next one is where the higher soul becomes one with the divine spark. And that's what we call God realization. But that journey also takes a long, long time. Yeah. So we are all here to try and work on evolving and becoming better and better. Okay. All right. So let's move on a little bit into the personality at this point. So the personality, as I mentioned, is your incarnated soul. And so the incarnated soul, when it comes here into the physical world, it, it has these vehicles. By the time it lands here, it has what is called a mental body, it has an astral body, and it has a physical body. So every incarnated soul will have all these bodies. Now, when man is awake, yes, when he is right now like you and me awake in this physical world, then he uses his physical body. And so the physical body is used through the whole day. However, interestingly, this physical body cannot last all through. And so the physical body becomes fatigued and it requires rest on a regular basis. And so because the physical body requires rest, yes, and the astral body, strangely, is a body that does not require any rest because it doesn't get fatigued. And so when this body, physical body goes to rest, then the personality or the incarnated soul moves from the physical body into the astral body. Yes. And the movement, yes, within the astral body. That is, I'm saying when you, this can happen at different points. So it can happen when you are going to sleep. Yes, whether it's, uh, whether you're daydreaming, whether you're actually taking a rest in the daytime or in the night. Or it could be during your meditation or it could be a trance. Now at any of these points, and also, yes, sometimes when people are going through anesthesia uh, during the operation, also move there. So when you move into that body, Yes, this, um, this experience that you have in that astral body depends on how well you have developed. Yes, so they say a primitive person cannot go too far. Yes, a couple of kilometers or a couple of miles is all they can go. And some of them don't even go that far. Even though they've come out of their physical body, in the astral body, they might just stay in their house or their village at the most. They won't go beyond now, if a person is a bit more developed, a more educated person, then that person can easily go into the astral world without any trouble. And they have more consciousness of this uh, astral world compared to a primitive person. The primitive person may not even remember that they actually went into a dream. They say, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't feel anything. I just went to sleep and I woke up. Whereas a more educated person who's developed a bit more, what happens to them is they start to actually consciously be aware that they actually moved. Yes, they can even will where they want to go. However, when they come back, if you can see here, I've written here, they have what is called vivid dreams. Now, even this vivid dreams that they refer to are not actually very, very clear. So it's mentioned here, people now call it a vivid dream. More often, 
this recollection are hopeless, entangled with vague memories of waking life and with impressions made from outside the etheric part of the brain. Thus, we arrive at a confused and often absurd dream of ordinary life. <laughs> so that's what people say, you know, I went there. Remember yesterday the lady was saying, I went there and then there was this, uh, this secret book that she opened and then she saw these uh, Egyptian things and uh, Saint Germain. Now, that's why they're saying, even though we are conscious to a large extent, the absolute clarity of what actually transpired in your journey in the astral world and when you come back into the physical form, you've got to remember, remember we said through the etheric body, it's the bridge through which whatever you experience in the astral body is then registered in the brain. That is not good enough yet. Yes. However, when a person is fully developed, uh, the book says he is fully now conscious of, of his time coming out of the physical body, going into the astral body, and then moving on. And so for him, whether he's in the physical body or the astral body, doesn't matter. His life is continuous. Yes. And so all 24 hours is something that he remembers and can register in his physical brain. And so, so for example, when a teacher, probably someone like, say, a uh, highly evolved teacher, maybe like Master Chua, is probably aware of all the minutes of the 24 hours. Whereas you and I, those eight hours, somewhere we remember something and then we don't remember. Even now, when you say and intend that during the night you would like to go into an inner school and learn from Master Chua, some of you might remember, yes, you saw Master Chua, you saw classmates, or you saw acharyas or some senior people or other Arhatic yogis or pranic healers. But interestingly, you will not remember what you learned. Sometimes you may not even remember what happened. You just remember a face and that's it. Yes, and so this is something that happens to us on a regular basis, yeah? And I think I'm more or less coming to the end of chapter four. Okay, sorry, chapter five. So that's the explanation of personality. So we went from mental body, we, we looked at the astral body, we looked at the different uh, physical, visible and invisible body, and then we looked at the vehicles again. And with that, uh, we come to the end of chapter five. Yay, I managed to finish it today. All right, so before we move on, uh, let me just look at these questions uh, quickly. How body gets prana from food? You've got to remember that just like you and I absorb prana, ground prana, sun prana, and air prana is absorbed by, for example, the tree. Yes? And therefore, the fruits that you eat of the tree or the vegetables that you eat of a plant basically have all of it together. Yes? And so it's good for us to consume fruits and vegetables. Now, the water, the water is able to absorb sun prana, air prana, and because it's in the earth, it also absorbs a lot of ground prana. And so when you drink water, this prana then gets absorbed by the physical body and goes into the energy body as well, right? So anything that you consume does have prana in it. And so they tell us it's better to eat fresh vegetables rather than canned vegetables or fruits. They say that it's better uh, to eat it, some of them better to eat raw than otherwise. For example, I remember Master would say, you can eat uh, a raw egg. The raw egg has more prana than a cooked egg, whether whatever, bullseye or omelet or whatever. So different forms have different energies, different prana, sorry. And so when you cook uh, certain foods, the prana composition does change. However, uh, it doesn't matter because as long as you consume enough to keep your body healthy, because the body needs prana, remember, to sustain itself, yeah? And for us, we can't just allow the uh, crown chakra to absorb the air prana with divine energy and the spleen and the basic and the souls. That prana is not enough. Some of us need to, at this time, I would say also need to eat. I need to eat a little bit to sustain myself. But yes, sometimes I do forget to eat. <laughs> All right, let me move up. Do I know anything about twin flames? Uh, not really. Uh, the, I'm not too aware of a twin flame. But however, there is something called soul mates. And so in one of the books that I read, I can't remember the name. So what happens is when you incarnate and, uh, okay, I'm going to use the, my son's little, because I'm not familiar with the whiteboard here yet. Uh, 
All right. So say, for example, this is from memory now. I'm, I'm hoping I'm not going to make too much of uh, error with this. So say, for example, A. Can you see A? Yeah. And B have incarnated together at that time. Right? Now, when A starts to continue with life, at some point, A is then, he leaves his life. Right? Now, B, for whatever reason, has a longer life and so stays here. Now, in the process, in a different incarnation, A will now meet, say, C. Correct? And B will meet D. And so they have their own lives. But at some point, a and B, who are continuing with their incarnations, might again be born at a different point together. And so when you meet someone that you have known and you have had experiences and lived a life with, when you meet them, they are what you call your soulmate. Now, we're not talking about this quick uh, transition. You're talking about many, many lifetimes. And so when this happens, it could be your son, it could be your husband, your wife, it could be a parent that you're very, very close to. Yes? And so the connection that you have with them is on all levels. And when you meet them, it's almost like whether you meet them after five years or 10 years, or you don't talk to them for a couple of months, you just connect. And these are your soulmates. And this happens to all of us. It could be friends that you have for a very, very long time. Sometimes it could be someone you just met in the Brownie Healing School and you just click because you are all souls, but also soulmates from a different lifetime. Now that's my take on it. Uh, it could vary. So it could be two brothers. It could be husband and wife. It could be father and son. Any relationship could be as close. Yes. And when we have such relationship, we do cherish them a lot because it's like you met a long lost friend. So, for example, when they started off, A and B might have been just brother and sister. But uh, in a different lifetime, they may not be brother and sister. They might be father and son or husband and wife. Yeah. So it's basically for the souls to learn different personalities. So when A here meets with... Sorry. So I lost you. So when A here meets with uh, C, the learnings here is very different from the relationship with B. Again, when B meets D, the relationship is very different. And so the qualities and the experience that they then come out with that lifetime is very, very different. Yes. And so ultimately, when A and B meet, they will be very different, more evolved, hopefully. And they are able to then use the use the experiences to build on their new life together, right? And so that would be my take on it. I could be wrong as well. All right, so let's move on. Why only a small part of higher soul um, imperfect and only a small aspect comes down? Because that's the only qu quantity of matter that can come down and also needed to continue as an incarnated soul. Now the higher soul is considered imperfect However, the higher soul is considered pure, right? So the higher soul is pure. And that's why when we, the incarnated soul, want to go back to our higher soul, we have to purify ourselves, pure. So we become pure before we go. However, the divine spark is perfect. And so when you want to unite with the divine spark, you have to become the perfect or perfected man, which we call the adept. Yeah, hopefully that's making sense now to you. Okay. How true is the statement that astral world is active during night for study purpose? Please explain. Uh, well, uh, basically the astral world is alive every second of every day, right? It depends on when you decide to move from this physical body into your astral body. So whenever you move and whatever is the longest time. Now, say for example, you've had a night shift and you're going to sleep through the day. And so through the day, you can go into the astral world before you go to sleep, you have to intend at night that during the night, I will in decree that I will want to go and do this study. So say, for example, you're a medical student um, and you had a night shift and you have to go back tomorrow. 
and you want to study. So you can use those five to eight hours that you get sleep to say, I want to study, say, um, the anatomy or whatever it is, the subject that you're learning. So that that period when you are in the astral body, you can actually make use to educate yourself. Just like in this physical world, there are schools, there are colleges, there are institutions, there are spiritual schools, um, there are academics. Uh, so whatever it is you want to learn, there are cooking classes, there are, you know, crochet and whatever. You can do the same thing in the astral world. So you need to plan what you want to do before you go to sleep. So that's why they say an educated man can will where they want to go. And so if you can, you can decide where you want to go, you may use this to take it further. I'll come back to the others soon. Let me just continue with this. All right. Now, sometimes the person that you see in a dream uh, could be a senior person. It could be an Acharya. They might represent something else for you, right? So in psychology, uh, one of the ways of looking at a dream is to try and understand what does that person mean to you? So say, for example, you suddenly saw your brother. What is it about your brother that you like? Yes. Or say, for example, you saw a particular friend. What is it about that friend that you like or don't like? And then you will notice what you like or don't like is also a mirror of yourself. So sometimes dreams are basically an interpretation of yourself. Sometimes there is more information coming through. So say, for example, you see a senior person or a teacher, maybe they were also there to teach you something. Right. And they may not be aware that they did the teaching because they are also not someone who's always conscious or fully conscious of all they do in the astral world. So sometimes you might find faces that come and sometimes you see them in the dream because they have maybe certain plans and certain duties and you happen to just be there at that point. Forehead chakra above higher soul. Forehead chakra above higher soul. Mm, sorry, I didn't understand that. How to absorb more ground prana? Well, take off your shoes and slippers. <laughs> yes, find Mother Earth where she is, I think right now might have a lot of prana. And if it is uh, post lockdown and if it is a little bit more free in your area, better to walk on Mother Earth directly on the mud or on the grass with, with your bare feet. Yes. And while you are there, or if you're standing, you just intend, you ask permission and you say, can I please absorb more ground prana and then absorb it into your astral, uh, sorry, into your etheric body. Yeah, so you can do that on a regular basis. Uh, if you remember in the old days, especially in, in I think, Middle East, um, Asia, Southeast Asia, our ancestors all walked barefoot. Yes, when they went from one place to another. Even recently, I still remember a neighbor. She would cook in the house barefoot. She will come out on the road. She'll even go to the shop barefoot. And I used to wonder, doesn't her feet hurt? <laughs> because if I try to walk on the tarred road, it, it does hurt. On the normal ground, it was okay. But there, there were people who did this. And this actually helps because when the body is able to, both the physical, and invisible and visible, is able to absorb more ground prana, it keeps your physical body strong. Because your physical body does require a lot of ground prana to sustain itself. So please do find ways to try and do that. I'm glad you had a good journey, uh, Golden Lotus Center, <laughs> uh, in traveling at night and you, you felt very good when you woke up. So you can continue to do that. Now, the ability to recollect depends on the capacity of the message coming through and registering in your brain, yeah? Okay, the prana from the sun and sun prana, uh, we'll have to go into a different book to do that. So maybe when, when and if we can start uh, etheric double, uh, it will come in that and we will go into that a little bit more in detail. But uh, there's a slight difference in those two. They do, I mean, of course, sun prana will come from the sun, but uh, there's a difference between all the prana that comes from the sun as well. Okay, what is the meaning of seeing extreme white flight and white wearing people playing around dreams? Please explain. Uh, like I said, what white would mean to you, what white might mean to me is completely different. Yes. Uh, so people wearing white, what does it mean to you? Uh, there are different circumstances where people wear white. And so for example, the Vesak, we usually wear light colored clothes. Interestingly, even for funerals, most people wear white. Uh, when you go uh, in many traditions, when you go to the graveyard, they usually wear white. In some cases, they wear black. 
So it really depends on what that means. Now, uh, you're seeing extreme white light. White light is usually from above and uh, it might have connection to your high soul or uh, to higher beings that are sending down that energy. Walk barefoot, yes, please do. Uh, please explain higher intuition and lower intuition. Okay, so higher intuition is with reference to the crown chakra, yes? And so when we talk about, for example, twin hearts, we say you need to activate the heart and then once this is activated, it helps open up the crown. Now, one of the plus points of opening up the crown is to enhance intuition. Now, the intuition on the crown chakra connects to, remember we spoke about the intuitional world above? So it connects to the intuitional world and brings down more information for you. So the intuition here is direct from there. But however, if you want that intuition to have form, yes, uh, not just a message, but it has actual form, then the forehead chakra is better to interpret form or intuitive form. And so most people are able to use now the crown chakra directly. And that has been what I've noticed with most people when they talk to me. Yeah, so that's, that's just the difference between the higher and the lower intuition. This is with form, this is without form. Uh, it's also something that you will learn when you do Master Chur's clairvoyance course. Is 12th chakra is incarnated soul? No, the 12th chakra is the seat of the incarnated soul. So when the incarnated soul comes down, that is on the tw uh, seventh month of pregnancy, 12 inches above your head, right there is the seat of the incarnated soul. And so it comes there and, and then the incarnated soul goes down further, downwards and outwards. And so then occupies all the vehicles. Remember we said they have three vehicles. It'll occupy all the three vehicles fully and completely. Physical, astral, and mental. Yeah? Sometimes when we see a dream, we remember it right after wake up. Yes. As soon as you wake up, you will remember more details. And so I recommend you keep a spiritual diary to either remember what happened in a dream or uh, what happened after or during a meditation. Yes, after that, you cannot recollect it because the brain's ability to re uh, register it and keep it for a long time uh, starts to disappear. So write it as quickly as possible because the bridge changes, yes, to an extent. All right. Okay. And then... Can we master any weakness... Um, I don't think you want to master a weakness. You want to master a virtue and you want to overcome a weakness. Um, I presume that's what you're trying to tell me. Yes, you can work on overcoming a particular weakness like anger in one incarnation, which means you have to literally focus every day to work on it. So about 21 days, according to psychology, it requires that amount of time for man to change. And so when man changes that behavior, even the tendency towards getting angry starts to change. But if you can do it regularly, yes, so do 21 days, give it a break, then again do another 21 days. So hopefully in the time that you are here, 15, 20, 30 years, you can slowly uh, but surely overcome the tendency of anger. Because you've got to remember if the anger is so prominent, that's why you're asking me, which means it's been a tendency in many lifetimes. And so Master Cho says it's like a big, huge onion. And so when you work on it for 21 days, maybe you removed a couple of layers, but there are many, many layers to that anger till you completely uproot it and it's out of your system. And then it doesn't matter. And that's why you see uh, there are stories of great rishis, yes, who are very spiritually developed, but when they get really mad, when they get angry, that's it. They just say things and you are ash, <laughs> nothing more than ash. But that means they haven't purified themselves fully. Now, if you at this level already realize you have this tendency and it is already a problem, start working on it now so that when you become more spiritually evolved, that is not going to be your downfall. Yeah. So do work on it. Um, how do you know it's within you? Please scan if you're a pranic healer. You can scan for these energies in your solar plexus, in your throat, in your agnya and in your crown on a regular basis and use uh, the techniques to overcome them. Plus, if you're an Arhatic Yogi, you have other uh, techniques as well. So you can use all of them. Now, how come for many months you don't get angry and suddenly you do? Uh, because there are still maybe specks of anger within you or there is a certain person 
or a certain situation that then tests to see whether you actually overcome this or not. All right. Okay. So let's go back to a few people who've been asking me. Uh, so Bijal, how come I can't unmute you now? Okay, Bijal, I can't unmute you for some reason. Rakesh, your hand is up. You have a question? Uh, Ma'am, ignore because it, I have raised the hand uh, in the beginning. Oh, for that. Okay, okay. Uh, Daksha. Okay. No, they're not allowed. So, me, yes. I have a question. Like you say, astral world, um, people who are doing a practice of mediumship. Sorry? Hello? Medium. They become a medium to talk to astral world. Correct. So, what is it? Is it good or uh, they also talk to these people who are passed away? So right. Got it. I what it is and how we should okay, listen done. to them or no? Okay. So, it's like this. Now, one is if you want to be a medium for another entity to use your, your body, uh, you've got to remember that you will get contaminated. Yes, and so there is going to be residue of, of, of that person's astral body or whichever body they're using at that point. Now, remember in the astral body, you still have emotions, you still have passions, right? And so for you to communicate and become a medium, which means this vehicle will then be used and can get contaminated. That's one. Secondly, you've got to remember, is this medium that is being used, is the ability for this brain of this medium good enough to be able to register all the messages from that entity that has entered in, right? So those two things would be something you need to consider if you are looking at mediums to help uh, get answers, yeah? All right, so Shivani. Good evening, ma'am. Atma Namaste. Good evening. Sumi, please, yes. Uh, yes. Ma'am, I had a question. Is there any difference between the incarnated soul and the higher soul and the soulmate? Like uh, you said, like A, B, A meets B and then B meets yes. uh, like, yeah, the, right? I got that example uh, very accurately. So does that mean the person you are uh, marrying, mm -hmm. uh, it is by the law of karma? Okay, couple of questions there. All right, so first is... Uh, is what is the difference between the incarnated soul and the higher soul? The incarnated soul is only a part of the higher soul. And so when you finish with this lifetime, you want to go back to uniting with your higher soul. They are different. However, uh, the partner that you choose this lifetime is, is not always going to be your soulmate. However, there is karma with that person. So maybe in a previous lifetime, you've been friends. Maybe in a previous lifetime, you've been brother, sister, mother, father, whatever. Uh, and now there are certain karmas that bring you all together so you can help each other work out these karmas and become better. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. And then how do we know that the person is right or not? I personally feel. <laughs> yes. So whether it is your husband, your, uh, you know, your fiance, your boyfriend, it doesn't always mean that they are your soulmate, yes? Uh, but the sense that you get, the sense that you feel you need to go by that. And also, uh, how do you know they are right? Internally, you should be able to feel that this is the right person. You can also scan, but scanning is just one part, yeah? Right now. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. You're most welcome. Hold on. Okay, let me quickly do a couple more and then we have to end for today. Oh my God, there are 45 messages. What are you people doing? <laughs> I don't think I have 45 minutes. That's like one minute even. Uh, okay, higher world, middle world and lower world. Uh, all right, what is the higher world, middle world and lower world? Can you please explain that? Now, when you talk about the higher, middle and lower world, uh, it's with reference to all worlds, yes? And so if you remember, there are seven planes. And so the highest is the one right on top. The lowest is here. And the middle is the middle one. <laughs> that's as far as uh, the worlds are concerned. That's, that's it. And so that's why Master re refers to beings on all levels. It doesn't matter just because you're on the lower level. He doesn't want to exclude them. He's always inclusive. And so that's, that's basically it.
Okay. All right. Let me get uh, Sheetal. Yes, Sheetal. Yes, Sheetal. Wow, your friend actually. Wow, your friend actually sorry, that there's no answer there. Your friend actually runs a whole marathon barefoot. Amazing. If you go to, uh, you know, Africa and if you go to even uh, Australia, it's amazing how the, um, the tribes there, they still work like that even today. Now, when you talk about an Acharya, when you see them, probably it was because the Acharya was taking a session or was with you attending a session. So it depends. If you can remember more details, it would give you a better understanding of what actually happened. Uh, sometimes we see people, I remember the dialogue and most of the time, most of the time, all of them were unknown to me. It could be because you see in the um, astral world, not everyone from your pranic healing class or your normal class will come there. There are others who also want to attend uh, the same uh, kind of courses that you're interested in. And so they would be there. Difference bet prana from sun and sun. I will come to that later. Okay. If you are aware of the physical body while you're asleep, does it mean that you have not gone completely into the astral world? Probably you're here and there and uh, therefore not completely gone out. Yeah. Or it might be that you have moved into the astral body and you are just hovering around in the physical space that you're familiar with, right? And so you're still in your room and you, you can sense your room or feel your room and things like that. Okay, so this person is talking about... Uh, uh, about how during her soul class, she, she felt like there was this amazing tunnel and uh, she was able to, she felt like this golden light sucked her upwards. And after some time, uh, you saw the golden flames and then upwards continued. And I finally reached somewhere full of golden light, felt uh, immense pleasure. Can you explain what I saw? Right. So uh, normally what happens is you have what is called the Antakarana. That is your tunnel of light and it could be golden in color and it goes all the way up. The flame could probably be the 12 chakra that you pass through at that point. And the light beyond that could still be the incarnated soul when you see it as light and or you came closer to your higher soul. And therefore, uh, that's when you feel so good, you sometimes do not want to come. Yeah, hopefully that helped you. Okay, and then... Uh, Okay, so when you are in dreams, you feel like you went for an exam, you forgot your studies, or you find that there are no clothes, uh, and you rush out. Uh, now, this is basically got to do with your emotional state. So if you are actually going in for an exam, the stress, uh, the worry kind of manifests in the astral world. Remember, in the astral world, actually, you don't even need clothes, right? But if you need, you can always say clothes, and they're on. In the um, astral world also, okay, we'll talk about that tomorrow, because the next chapter is death. We'll come to that in that, okay? Uh, insights into future incidents. Uh, this is basically because in the astral world, time is not like here. Right now, it's about 7.35. But in the astral world, it's not 7.35 p.m. on the 6th of May, 2020. So when you go to the astral world, you might be here. You can go, the, the present, past, and future in the astral world is different. And so when you go, you might even go into the future and have an experience. And so sometimes you feel, hey, this already happened to me, yeah? Uh, that would be one way of uh, figuring out why sometimes you feel like you have insight of the future. Well, when you talk about uh, only the positive qualities of us reach the ego, yes, it does. However, your karmic balance is still there. And so the good and the bad that you do, you have to pay for everything that you did you have to reap the, the fruit for all the seeds that you put in. And so that cycle is different from your growth, right? And so that is still interconnected when you decide to come here, when you create that plan to come down to earth, your karma is intertwined into that. So your journey here has karma 
uh, already in it. Luminous and bright white light. Now luminous light is just, you know, like when I raise my hands and I say white prana, the white light that I can send is just ordinary prana. So luminous is usually associated with ordinary prana, whereas brilliant white light is associated from a higher source, maybe from the higher soul or from God. Yeah. Why do we get dreams when someone dies? Um, I'm not too sure if you're getting dreams of the person who died or just dreams. So sometimes you have dreams of the person because when you go into the astral world, you actually meet them and they uh, try to communicate with you. Yeah. Okay. Kyle Murray. Yes. Kyle Murray, do you have a question? Yes. Yes, uh, Atma Namaste, Sumi. Yeah. I wanted to know at a specific time, yeah, at a specific time, is there only one incarnated soul for each higher soul? Or there are many incarnate, incarnated souls for the same higher soul? So you were not there for my earlier session. Every incarnated soul has only one physical body and connected to one higher soul. After that uh, merges with the higher soul, then the next incarnation Correct. starts. And it takes on another body or set of bodies or set of vehicles to continue with its journey. Yeah? Thank you. You're Thank most you. welcome. All right. So I'm going to end the session now. Uh, for those of you who need to go for break for your dinner, sorry. <laughs> I'm already at breakfast. Tomorrow's breakfast is going to be very late. So wishing you all a wonderful Vesak. Tomorrow's going to be an exceptional day. Uh, we have about 7,000 7, Arhatic yogis who have registered online and maybe more because the families might be with them at home. So we're going to have, uh, let's say we're going to have a blast with spiritual energy and spiritual shower. So please be ready. Uh, please do sufficient exercise, if not more exercise tomorrow as we come together at 8 a.m. Yeah. So let's end with a Thanksgiving prayer. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokoksi, to Lord Maha Guruji Mailing, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, angels and teachers and masters of theosophy, angels and beings of light, knowledge and wisdom. We thank you all for your priceless teachings, for the greater understanding and simplicity of your pearls of wisdom. We thank you in full faith. We ask for your help to absorb and assimilate it and to use it to become a better divine instrument. We thank you with gratitude, with respect, with much love. Thank you, everybody. Atma Namaste. And see you tomorrow. I will see if I have a couple of minutes before I end this uh, question and answer. Okay. All right. Does causal body help in Kriya Shakti or materialization. Now, remember with Kriya Shakti, there are many, many uh, principles. And so all those principles are very essential for it to materialize. Because if you do not have all those, materialization is not possible. So do look at your notes with reference to Kriya Shakti. The answer should be there. Higher soul occupies three bodies. <laughs> what about the causal body? A causal body is just the residence of the higher soul. So that's where your higher soul stays. But when it comes down to evolve, as we spoke today, it needs the three bodies. Will it work if I pray before I sleep to Master Chua? Yes, it should. Hopefully you'll remember when you do meet him. Can you do tra uh, sex transmutation every day? Um, Rakesh, uh, if you're male, no problem. As long as you have not released, it's okay for you to do sex transmutation. Uh, for women, when you have the menstrual cycles, you cannot do transmutation. All other times you can do. Recommendation is usually once a week. But if you are single and your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend is not around and you're single at that point and you have a lot of energy, you may do it two or three times a week. Yes, the etheric body is a bridge between the physical brain and the thoughts and emotions from the astral and mental body. The color of violet 
light luminous green and orange mean during meditation of Thunath. Violet is usually the hue of spirituality, usually associated with the Agni Chakra or the Crown Chakra. Sometimes the Agni Chakra is also green and violet together or yellow and violet together. So it might be just the Agni Chakra that you're seeing. The orange might be a different tinge of yellow. Orange is usually found also in the Crown Chakra. Remember the Crown Chakra has all the colors. So sometimes when you're in the crown chakra, you might see different colors because uh, remember only the center is the 12 golden petals surrounding the 12, the 960 are actually colorful petals. So maybe that's what you were seeing in your meditation of Twin Hearts. Yes, it would have different frequencies uh, because the vibration, the, the kind of energy that you bring in has an influence on the crown chakra and all its petals and all the colors in it, yeah? The emotional mental body um, is nothing to do with the inner and outer aura that we learn in pranic healing. That inner and outer aura is only part of the etheric body, which is the invisible physical body. Yeah, so it's part of what you call the physical body. I'm not too sure about this. If the question is, can your wishes be fulfilled in your astral world? I've never tried. I so no experience to answer that. Yeah. Okay. If we invoke, you invoke before you go to sleep, so you're uh, awake, yes, and then hopefully when you experience something uh, in the morning, hopefully you will remember what you learned or what you saw. Okay. Um, the part of Lord Buddha for tomorrow, uh, the energy that comes at that exact point, that's when you will be doing the meditation of Twin Hearts and the let go, that is Master chants the Om and he says let go, will be at exactly around that time, the eight minutes, when Lord Buddha will actually appear uh, and send his energies down. Yeah. Um, the whole process, we actually spoke about it, not in this session, but in a different session. It would take a little longer than now to tell you about it, but uh, the energy is amazing. If you can tune into it, it also happens uh, in the Valley of Flowers up in the Himalayan mountains every time. So there's actually a, a group of people that come. Uh, there are also what you call the Great White Brotherhood that will be present uh, before the Lord Buddha can come. The Lord Christ or Lord Maitreya will also do the preparation for this. And then Lord Buddha comes and then the energy gets anchored with the help of these higher beings and each one of you. Because without you, without your physical bodies, this cannot get anchored. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, people. Sorry. I hope uh, we can do this later. I will also need to go. I need to also prepare and have dinner with my family. So thank you. Atmanamaste. Take care.